Traditionally, land was broken up, each lot was worth something to a private owner. But there are spaces out there that for a long time have been considered here in the public, such as navigable waterways and navigable roads. Now, roads in particular weren't always public. In fact, many of them were owned by a private owner at some point. But through a process that we describe as prescription, the use by the public made that space inherently public. Say if I own this road right here, and I want to give it to the public. It first needs to gain official acceptance by the government so they can accept liability over that road so we can avoid the concept of the tragedy of the commons. Another source of inherent publicness lies in public trust in that these spaces have always been used by the public. In public hands, they are more valuable and create more commerce for the culture as a whole than in private hands. Finally, there are spaces that have been customably used by specific communities for ritual, for religion, for recreation, and through that long-term use by that specific group, they consider that space inherently public. Now, the government has a lot of interest in this whole process because those spaces that are inherently public become sort of government property. And the government basically is trying to serve the interests of the growth of that culture, the commerce, the growth of commerce. And so the government might go, hey, I want to build a road from one town to another, but what if there is a private property in the way? Well, the government might say, hey, I'll give you $50,000 if you move. And then that guy says, I don't think so. Well, that guy, he's a holdout. He wants to stay on his property and block progress. Well, the government, he's got a special tool. Or well, she's got a special tool. What we call that? Feminine? Domain. It allows the government to kick you off your land for market value and then build that road. So, you know, in recent years, it hasn't, hasn't all been all just about money. Commerce has been the only thing that has brought inherently public land into the discussion, you know. In the situation, for example, of beaches, um, there seemed to be a social value to the use of that space. Yet people need to stay clean, they can play sports, have tons of fun, become better citizens, and so there's a social value in that space. And so in, in recent cases, actually, it's been common that places such as beaches, beside navigable waterways, and beside private property, have been seized by the public and considered inherently public. What's so important about all of this? Well we got to think of what land that we need, both to create a financially active culture of commerce, but also a socially active and healthy community. Out there in the world, there are many places that are inherently public.